Hello and welcome to Ingression, the only series that gives you the best tips, tricks, and information on the game that we all love, Ingress. I, of course, am your lovable enlightened instructor, Incredible Hulk, aka Colin Williams. And this is Anomalies 204, where we'll cover how to regroup, regear, and refuel in between measurements in the digital fisticuffs known as Anomalies. Now, if you haven't watched the other Anomaly videos, go do that now, then come back to this video. Otherwise, let's get pumping on Anomalies 204. So, you've finished the first measurement, you'll likely regroup and move on to Cluster 2. It is best to move to your next designated portal as quickly as possible, since if you get there first, you'll be able to easily capture the portal for your faction and have the high ground. Now, make sure to set a location pin for the portal in the next cluster in your guys' Google Hangout for your team, so that if anyone needs a bathroom break or food break along the way, they can just quickly make their own pit stop, then meet back up with your group, and they'll have a map to the exact location. When you're on your way there, definitely have your levelers deploy resonators on any gray or friendly portals with open slots, so that way they can get AP, but they shouldn't stop or slow the group for the deploys. You want to keep moving as quickly as possible. And also remember, they'll want at least 100 resonators left per measurement remaining so that they don't run out. All players that are going though should feel free to hack portals along the way to replenish some of their gear as, once again as long as you don't stop walking. Because you guys will effectively have a mobile walking 8 and even if you have to place 8 resonators down in order to get that level 8 portal, you'll get at least that many back. But avoid wasting bursters on destroying any enemy portals that are level 6 or above. You probably won't get enough back to make it worth it. Just keep walking and keep hacking. Uh, levelers, another way that you guys can get AP is you should be okay tossing links as long as the links are only between portals in the clusters that you have left. So if you're moving to cluster 3, it's okay to toss a link from cluster 2 to cluster 1 most of the time. But you wouldn't want to link from cluster 3 to 2 since that might cause issues for your linking teams trying to link into cluster three. So captains definitely let your guys know when you're just entered into the new cluster so they can stop linking. <sighs> and in regards to links, I, I also highly, highly want to mention uh, on your way when you're actually driving to the anomaly. So before the anomaly days even started, when you guys are headed that way, if you're driving, taking a train, whatever to the anomaly from your home area, do not throw any YOLO links. Uh, YOLO links are links where you just go, oh, holy crap, I can throw a 200 kilometer link from this gas station, so I will, just cause. Uh, because those stray links can hurt your regional team that are trying to throw mega fields to help your anomaly score. You might actually hurt your team by just throwing those links that only get you 323 AP anyways, so it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, uh, you'll likely have at least eight level eight players on your team. So once you get to your target portal, you can turn your target portal into a quick glyph hacking farm. If you're glyph hacking uh, the portal though, divide your team so that no more than half of the players are hacking at any given time. So maybe you have uh, you know, one, you give everyone a one or a two, and then ones are hacking and then twos are hacking, and you go back and forth. Uh, this makes sure that you have players that can quickly respond if the other team starts attacking. Otherwise, if everyone is in the glyph hack, you might lose that portal due to delay, having to exit the hack, or not even knowing that the attack is happening. Uh, you know, if the other team already strongly controls the target portal, then select a nearby, slightly out of the way portal that won't get blown up quite so easily for farming. Now, on your farming portal, you're going to want to have your flexes deploy a rare heatsink. That's why we have that in their loadout. And this will allow all players four glyph hacks in 10 minutes and allow your flexes five hacks since they can glyph hack and then place the heat sink down and reset it. And then you guys are all good to go for that flex. Uh, if your farming portal is also the target portal, make sure that two axis shields are placed on it. So that way it's always going to be protected while you guys farm. Even if people start attacking it, you won't lose that portal. Now, if you have more time, then you can toss a common multi-hack on it for eight hacks per person. Uh, that's why I said, you know, have two axis shields and the rare heat sink. That way you can toss an additional common multi-hack, even if it's the target portal. With an average team of just 10 players at just four glyph hacks, that will give your collective group 150 more level eight XMPs, 22 power cubes, and 165 level eight rezos. 
With more portals or multi-hacks, you can easily replenish 10% of your total inventory through glyph farming between each measurement, which means you have more stuff to be able to go through for that last measurement. Uh, from there, once you guys have all your gear, you can evaluate gear and do a quick little gear swap as needed. For the gear swap, you'll want to make sure that you're at least 60 feet away from any players, even players from your own team, because that way they don't accidentally grab your capsules, and then sink your drops to prevent the dread capsule robbers. Uh, and this means that the receiving person will be zoomed in on a portal, and as soon as the other person says dropped, the receiving player will immediately hit OK to zoom out, refreshing the screen so that they can grab that capsule. Now, uh, when it comes to the, the portals, if you have control of the target portal, I'd recommend no more than a third of your players leave the portal at any given moment for if it's whether or not it's gear swaps or additional restroom breaks, because that'll help make sure that you don't lose the portal. Because if you only have one person staying at that portal and the other faction comes rolling up, they could go, oh, we can easily take this and bam, you've just lost your high ground. So, and even if a player is leaving to grab something, make sure that they have a key to the portal so that they can remotely charge from whatever they're doing. And I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video has texted in the bathroom. We all do it. So instead of texting, just charge with one hand and, and pee with the other. Uh, unless, of course, you're you know, an agent with only one arm. Then, in that case, uh, just charge the portal. You don't need to aim. Which is more important? A stranger's toilet being clean or the portal? It's not your toilet, but it is your portal. So, uh, since you have a bit of resting time, this is a good time to have the captain go over any strategy tweaks and coach any of the newer players on the way so that they can uh, better help the team as possible. Because there's usually going to be something you guys figure out between the measurements of, oh, you know, maybe we need this person, let's, let's give them a hint on how to do this, or maybe they didn't watch this video series, so let's give them some information so that we're all good to go. So you guys have moved, uh, cluster two will be pretty much the same as cluster one for all of the attacking stuff, and then repeat your regroup and regear. Then you'll have cluster three will be pretty much the same, then regroup and regear. And by the time you guys reach cluster four, that's when you'll probably need to mold your strategies a little bit more. So to begin with, you'll likely need to farm more between measurement three and measurement four with at least an eight hack setup. You guys might have, have a, a rare multi-hack by then, you can do a little bit more. If possible, you might want to see if there's any other teams from your faction that have the exact opposite gear problem you have. So like they have too many rezos and not enough XMPs and you're XMP heavy without rezos uh, because you guys have mostly been defending instead of uh, attacking. And you guys, the captains can kind of do global ops and check, hey, do we have anyone that can trade? And maybe you guys will be able to do that uh, really quickly and send some people back and forth as little mules for items. Um, if you can't gear swap or get a lot of supplies, then focus on your strength areas. If you have lots of rezos but not many power cubes left, then go for solid deploying instead of recharging quite as much. If you guys own the portal, of course. Uh, you know, if you're XMP heavy and don't control the portal, then you might want to wait till closer to the measurement time to try to take the portal and just try to blast it to hell in a shorter period of time. Uh, now, uh, by that last measurement, you know, your team usually has kind of a bit of a rhythm down and you'll know how to work with the gear that you have. And if you guys do run out of gear, uh, don't worry. Remember, there's, there's not only other teams at your guys' site, but there's other sites and connected cells and everything else that are helping keep the score up. So don't feel so horribly. Uh, but hopefully, you know, most of your portals will be less contested and you'll still have plenty of gear for measurement four. If you do end up at a volatile or highly contested portal, then we've got a different strategy for you that will cover in Anomalies 205. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out Anomalies 205 for the battle strategy to use on the most contested and insane portals in the Ingress Fight Club known as Anomalies.